everybody, this is Zach from Board with Friends, and we are back with our continuing adventure into the House of Danger, uh, the choose-your-own-adventure game from Prospero Hall and Z-Man Games. Uh, we're moving on to Chapter 3 today, and um, yeah, we're just going to get right to it. Um, didn't have a ton of eventful stuff happen in Chapter 2, other than, you know, dying and uh, meeting some ghosts and things like that. Um, I didn't get a lot of items, although I did get a sandwich, which is pretty cool. And I had a psychic premonition of what I think is like a to one of those spinning things from a safe, like you'd see at like an old bank heist movie or something. But uh, we'll find out what that means hopefully uh, soon. So we're gonna open up the book, and we will move on to chapter three, the rescue. <clears throat> You're still not sure what's really going on in this place. You were already freaked out by the creepy stuff you saw outside the Marsden house, and the discovery of actual spirits from beyond the grave inside the house has only made you more on edge. You steal your nerves and remind yourself that you're not just an aspiring detective. You're a psychic investigator. You eat spirits from beyond the grave for breakfast. Not really. But the point is, you feel a surge of confidence. You can do this. At any rate, you've come way too far to turn back now, so all you can do is hope that the depths of the house hold some insight into the mysterious nightmares that have plagued you for weeks, and drew you to this modern architecture house of horrors in the first place. But the elevator which all, which all your hopes rest on is totally trashed. The last person to use it must have really hated elevators. Based on the scratch marks on the walls, they might have had sharp claws too. A strange sensation now washes over you. Your head spins. You lose your balance, and you fall to your knees. Although you don't quite black out, you're overwhelmed by visions as your consciousness leaves your body and travels through the house's lower reaches on mind power alone. You drift downward through a meeting room full of huge shadowy figures and a laboratory stocked with equipment. Continued on 61. All right. <clears throat> your awareness projects deeper under the estate you finally come to a jail cell your mind can't penetrate to see who is inside but a wave of anguish emits from it like heat from the sun you sense that the person trapped inside is responsible for what you have encountered so far and could help and could help with what you'll encounter next draw clue 76 to discover your goal all right. Your mind joins your body again as you swiftly snap... Oh, well, I should read the clue first. Draw a clue 76. Okay. 71, 74, 75, 76. I bet the goal is, because the chapter's a rescue, go find this person. Chapter 3 goal. Rescue the prisoner you sensed from your psychic projection. I'm so smart. Anyway. Your mind joins your body again as you swiftly, as though swiftly snapping back into place. It takes you a moment to get to your bearings. You're in your own body, in an elevator, in a spooky house that you somewhat regret ever setting foot inside. You check the panel and find that all the buttons have been pri pried off except two. They might be for the only active basement levels. Of course, it's also possible they're just the floors that whoever wrecked the elevator wants to lure you to. With a whoosh, the elevator doors briskly close. If you press the button for the sub-basement, two, go to card 71. If you press the button for sub-basement three, you go to 78. Hmm. Well, let's go to 71 and see what happens. I'm gonna die. That's 70. That's 71. Sub-basement 2 seems like the safer bet. At the very least, it's one less flight of stairs to climb back up if things go horribly wrong and you need to flee back up to the surface. The elevator opens into an administrative office. Just as you enter the room, a television monitor crackles to life. On the screen is a video feed of a haggard man in a lab coat. The camera pans up until his face fills the screen. If you can hear this, your life is in danger, he says. 
My former assistant has locked me up in the detention cells and is using all our discoveries for evil. You must help me escape. If we don't stop her... The video feed cuts off. There's a closed door on the far wall and an open uncovered air duct that could you could easily fit into. If you try the door, go to card story card 82. If you crawl through the air duct, go to story card 65. Mm. At least if I go through the air duct, I can quote a lot of fun action movies, right? So let's go to 65. There's probably some sort of insect that's going to eat me in there. The air ducts take you over a loud room full of what sounds like a gang of rowdy hooligans. You peek through the grate and discover a group of massive, savage chimps sitting at a conference table, snorting and growling and beating their chests. A woman sits at the head of the table, speaking to them, but you're too far away to hear over the chaos. There's a smaller, more rickety air duct that leads to the wall by the woman, and if you're careful, you could probably make it there to hear what she's saying. You can also see from here that the air duct you are, you are in splits off and terminates into two other rooms. The room on the left is dimly lit by the glow of blue liquid in some large glass vats. The room on the right is pitch black. You could quietly crawl to either and jump out. Optional challenge. Crawl through the rickety air duct to hear the woman speak. If I win, I get to draw clue 84. If I lose, I raise the danger meter by 2 and draw clue 71. Uh... Yeah, well... You know what? We really haven't raised the danger meter all that much, so let's... Let's try it. So we're going to use our dexterity, which I have nothing to do for. Um, but we have to roll a 3 or higher. So... Chances are good I'm going to make this work. Hopefully I just don't roll a 1. And that is a 5. Alright, so we get to draw clue 84. And I suppose I get to hear her speak. Let's see here. <clears throat> You crawl through the rickety air duct without breaking it, or yourself, and overhear the woman lecturing the chimps on ways to improve the profitability of a counterfeiting operation. The chimps are less than attentive. You crawl back up into the main vent, not sure what to think. That was not as interesting as I hope, but I'm sure it will be good for the story later. All right, so do I want to go to the left duck? duct or do i want to go to the right pitch black room or glowing blue liquid yeah let's see what glowing blue liquid does to me 67 You see rows and rows of glowing blue vats, all filled with chimpanzees in various stages of development. The largest ones are as big as adult humans. Someone is bending the laws of nature to unethical extremes down here. The vats are plugged into a utility box on the wall. On top is a glowing cap with three crystals. It might be some kind of power source. Something about this crystalline cap calls to you. It feels important. From the utility box, cards, cords and wires run into the adjoining room through a propped open door. There's also a conveyor belt that leads through an opening in the far wall. The belt is moving slowly, and the motion is mildly hypnotic. Optional challenge. Pry the crystalline cap loose. If I win, I draw clue 87. If I lose, I raise the danger meter, but I may try again. All right. After challenge, make story choice below. Okay. Well, we're definitely going to do it, and I have a way to help with strength because I have leverage. So we will use our large wooden dowel, which gets plus two to my roll. Hopefully I don't roll a one, otherwise I will break it. Um, and again, the danger meter is three, 
So, very good chance I will do this as long as I don't roll a 1. That's a 5. So, that's a 7 with my dowel. Alright, so I get to draw clue 87. 3, 5, 6, 7. I'd like to raise that psychic meter, but nothing's given me that option yet. You pry the crystalline cap from the utility box. Even unplugged, it keeps glowing. This object gives you a shiver. Your psychic senses tell you this is an important item. Keep this item. Move forward three spaces on the psychic scale. Well, that worked. All right, so we're going to go one, two, three. We are now level three psychic. And I get to keep this for whatever reason. It'll go with my satellite dish and whirring metal sphere. Awesome. If you follow the cords through the door, go to story card 72. If you jump on the conveyor belt to see where it goes, go to story card 82. Well, I've played lots of Space Quest games. There's nothing bad that could happen if I jump on a conveyor belt. So let's go to story card 82. That's 81, 82. You die. The room is full of bananas and money. Ooh. At a glance, you can see that the money is counterfeit, and very poorly counterfeited at that. Instead of presidents, the bills feature pictures of bananas. Along with the banana bills, the room contains squash bananas that must have been run through the printing press. It's as if whoever was making all this funny money was a little distracted. There's a precarious pile of bananas beneath a high shelf, and you can see a box up there. You can probably climb up there to check it out, if you dare. There's a door leading in out into the hallway. Next to the door is a large unlocked freezer unit built into the wall. This is uh, getting interesting. Premonition. If you are psychic level 3 or higher, on the psychic scale, draw clue 72. Awesome, we are now. Getting premonitions. 72? 72. That is a belt? What the hell is that? It's a box? That looks like a belt buckle. Or maybe it's a suitcase that's open, because that kind of looks like a zipper. Huh. No idea. Alright, we'll add it to the premonitions. Alright, optional challenge. I can climb the banana pile. If I win, I draw clue 83. If I lose, I raise the danger meter by 4. Wow, alright, things are heating up. I have nothing to help with climbing, but the danger meter is pretty low, and I have two items that help me lower that danger meter, so what the heck, let's climb a pile of bananas. Make Donkey Kong proud. Alright, so we need a three or higher. That's a one, so that is an instant fail. Um, I wasn't using my dowel at the time, but I forgot to unequip it. Because the towel doesn't help. Okay, so I lose. And I don't get to retry. So I fell down. A pile of bananas. One, two, three, four. Holy crap. All right. That raised it quite a bit. All right. Well, I'm not going to do any drinking or whatever yet. I'll make a decision to do that later. Um, but I do have to decide where I want to go. If you head into the hall, go to the story card 86. If you open the freezer unit, open story card 70. Let's see what's in the freezer. Oh, man. I wanted to see what was in that box. But I slipped on banana peels. <laughs> The moment you open the freezer door, a stench overtakes you. It's so claw cloyingly sweet that you almost gag. Then you hear breathing. Oh, great. 
A creature stands before you on four bulbous legs that jut out from a curved, elongated, yellow body. Its pale skin is peeled back at the head to reveal soulless black eyes and an enormous mouth full of razor-sharp teeth. It's a banana. A hideous, shark-mouthed banana, crafted by some manner of mad science or dark sorcery, far beyond your understanding. The creature shrieks and snorts, then it charges you. Oh, I don't die. That is... That is the stuff of nightmares. It's a shark na shark nana. All right. <laughs> Required challenge. Fight the banana creature. If I win, I draw clue 69. If I lose, I draw clue 86. I bet clue 86 is you died. All right. Well, um, I, got, I don't have my cavalry saber anymore, but I do have a pocket knife. So let's use that at least to help. Should I drink some water before I eat and fight the banana? <laughs> I need to roll a four or higher. Sorry, three or higher if I'm using my pocket knife. If I draw, if I drink the water, discard at any time to lower the danger meter by three. And that'll put me almost at the bottom. Yeah, let's drink some water before. We should hydrate before we fight a banana monster. I, I feel that is something I should do. So we'll go one, two, three, down. I get plus one, so again, as long as I don't roll a one, uh, well, I have to roll a two or higher, basically. That's a four. So I beat the banana. Well, allegedly. Um, and we're going to draw clue 69. Write your jokes below. There we go. 67, 68, 69. Its maw may be terrifying, but the creature's insides are as soft and squishy as you'd expect a bananimal. Ah, oh, see, I said shark nana. Bananimal, that's a little bit better. A bananimal to have. You split it in two, and a glob of its flesh winds up in your mouth. It tastes amazing. You're completely rejuvenated. Lower danger meter by three. Move forward two spaces on the psychic scale. Okay, well, I guess I didn't have to drink my water, but... So we'll go back down to that, and uh, was it two spaces? Yes. One, two. We are close to level four. Awesome. Um, and then it says go to story card 79. There's 79. With the creature bested, you have a good opportunity to search the freezer unit, which is an odd triangle-shaped chamber designed to be opened on three sides. You see a huge bed of banana leaves in the corner, piled with miscellaneous garbage. There might be something valuable in the weird nest. If you can stomach sifting through it, there's also a large block of solid ice stuck on the wall, with something frozen inside. Perhaps you can break it open. You find that the freezer doors can be opened from inside. You hear the soft hum of a machine purring behind one of them, and the other is utterly quiet. Optional challenges. Search the creature's nest. If I win, I draw clue 88. If I lose, I raise the danger meter by one. Um, then I have the optional challenge to break open the block of ice with strength. Do I have strength? I have my wooden dowel. Well, the heck with it. Let's search the uh, thing. So now we got to roll a three or higher because I don't have anything else to add to perception, but we'll see what we can find. That's a three. Awesome. So, we are going to draw clue 88. Oh. We got a battery. This is a standard 9-volt battery. It could open power a flashlight, or a taser, or who knows what else. Okay. We got a battery. And now let's break open some ice. And I will use my very trusty and very handy wooden dowel to do that. 
So that gives me plus two, so I just don't want to roll a one. That's a six. Awesome. So I will draw clue 58, which is the top one. Neat. Homemade ghost trap. Ooh. It's a cassette tape recorder, hardwired to a storage tank. An index card on the back says the tank is an astral containment vessel. So instead of capturing sounds, it captures ghosts. Your psychic sense tells you this is an important item. My nostalgia tells me this is an important item. Keep this item, move forward one space on the psychic scale. Awesome. We are level four. Oh, I'm excited. And it's a cassette tape. That just makes it doubly awesome. Okay, cool. Um, if you try the humming door, go to story card 72. If you prefer the silent one, go to story card 64. Well, let's see what's humming. 72. Uh, 72. There you are. The room is filled with generators of every shape and size, and they all look extremely unsafe. In fact, one of the older, larger ones has a huge crack in the casing, but it's still running. The irregular bursts of electricity arcing from it near every, from it to every nearby surface. You'd rather not get close to it, but you'll have to if you want to investigate the door to a vault on the other side. The only other exit isn't a door at all, but a massive hole in the wall that leads into a total darkness. As you feel around the dark for a light switch, you discover that the passageway isn't so much a hallway as a tunnel with rough walls that have been dug out of the rock and soil. If you try to get past the crackling generator to reach the vault, go to story card 68. If you take the tunnel into the darkness, go to story card 87. <sighs> Let's go to 68. I'm going to get electrocuted. If you ever find yourself running a criminal organization, here's a great way to weed out your dumbest and least trustworthy henchmen. Put a big, tempting vault door behind a deadly piece of machine that kills anyone who gets within th three feet of it. Unfortunately, the trick works on your psychic investigators as well. You press your back against the far wall and try to scooch toward the vault door as safely as possible, but it's no use. A hundred thousand volts of electricity surge through you, and your smoldering body slumps to the floor dead. That's lovely. Move back two spaces on the psychic scale and return to story card 72. Oops. I broke it. All right, well, let's go in the tunnel. 87. There we go. You can't see more than a few feet in front of you as you walk down the tunnel. So when a man's voice calls out from the darkness, you almost jump out of your skin. Hey you! You freeze. What now? You're the new lab assistant, right? It's about time you got here. You have the briefcase? If you have clue 38, give it to the mysterious stranger by discarding it and drawing clue 62. If you do not have clue 38, draw clue 82. I do not have a briefcase. So let's draw clue 82 and probably get killed. Again. The man spits on the tunnel floor. Was it not clear that you were supposed to meet me here with the briefcase? He says. Raise danger meter by three and finish story card 87. One, two, three. Great. The man rushes back down the tunnel in the direction he came from, his footsteps booming in the darkness. There's a door with iron bars built into the wall here. It looks like it could lead to the, some sort of cell, or maybe a kennel. It's unlocked. If you follow the man down to the tunnel, go to story card 81. If you open the cell door to see what's inside, go to story card 62. Let's go to story card 62, which is on the top here. Cool. You die.
You slide open the barred door. It looks much more industrial than the other rooms you've been in. The door slides shut on its own. Clang! And you hear it lock behind you. You see some kind of gated structure down the hallway in front of you and quickly press yourself against the wall when you realize that two figures are guarding it. There's also a desk on the side of the room that's out of the guard's line of sight. If you are level 3 or higher on the psychic scale, draw 80. We're still level 3, even though we lost some ground. Stupid lightning bolts. 80. Oh, oh, okay. That's, that's, um, that's pretty obvious what's going on there. Alright, well, there's a brain on fire. If you try your luck with the guards, go to 74. If you sneak across the room to the desk, go to 63. Let's go to 63. You make it to the desk unnoticed. The only thing there is a fancy new computer. It's a shiny beige box underneath a monitor that glows with rows of green text and a blinking command prompt. If you can manage to break through the computer's security, you might find some useful information stored in its internal memory. Optional challenge. Search the computer for information. If you are a level 3 or higher on the psychic scale, add plus 1 to your roll in addition to the challenge booster. To any challenge booster. I don't have a challenge booster for this, but I can add 1 because I am level 3. If I win, I draw clue 66. If I lose, I raise the danger meter by 2. Okay. Well, let's do it. Um, so I need to roll a... Since I get to boost it by 1, I need to roll a 3 or higher. That is not good. Okay, so I raise the danger meter by 2. I should have eaten my sandwich. The one way out after the challenge continues below, so I don't get to retry. After one way out of here is down to the one way out of here is down a hall to a gate with a guard by two chimps. Uh, I don't have a choice here. Approach the chimp guards by going to story card seventy four. I'm gonna have to fight some chimps again. The two guards are huge chimpanzees, as tall as you are. They are walking upright, just like you are. They are wearing security guard uniforms, just like you are not. They notice this key difference. They attack. Required challenge. Battle the guards. Turn over this card and continue reading. If I win, if I lose, I raise the danger meter by four and try again. Okay. Uh, well, I got my pocket knife. So I'm definitely going to equip that, and uh, I need a four, a five, a three or more, because I have plus one from the pocket knife. That is a five. Awesome. So I win, I turn over the card, and continue reading. And I didn't break my knife. Once you defeat the chimpanzee guards, you find that the gate will only open with an electronic keycard. If you have clue 28 or 77, you open the gate. Go to story card 69. If you do not have clue 28 or 77, go to story card 88. I have... don't have those. So I'm going to story card 88. I need a key card. Without the key card, you're trapped. You can't get past the gate, and you can't leave the detention center through the locked front door. Just as you're about to give up, you spot a hole in the ceiling tiles, mostly obscured by shadows in the corner of the room. Go through the hole in the ceiling by drawing clue 70. There's a key card in the hole. I doubt it'd be that contrived. The hole opens up into a vertical shaft with haphazardly placed handholds, like a climbing wall. You found a secret passage! Required challenge, ascend the shaft. 
If I win, I lower the danger meter by one and I draw clue 81. If I lose, I raise the danger meter by two and try again. All right, well, let's try it. I don't have anything to raise climbing. Uh, all right, so I need a four or more. Six, awesome, we did it. Um, I lower the danger meter by one. And I draw clue 81. You've climbed 20 feet when the handholds suddenly recede into the wall and disappear. This isn't just any secret passage. It's a booby-trapped one. Think fast. Required challenge. Avoid falling. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I have to roll perception. Win lower danger meter by one and draw a clue 78. Lose, I raise the danger meter by two and try again. Um, well, let's try it. So I need a four or more. And I threw it over, but hey, it counts. It's still on the table. Um, and that is a four. It's awesome. <laughs> so I... So much for using a dice tray. Um, clue 78. Uh, oh, and I get to lower the danger meter by one. Boop. You've found a ledge, but getting onto it is going to take some serious agility. Required challenge, get on the ledge quick. Lower the danger. Uh, all right, so I need to do use dexterity now. Again, nothing to boost dexterity. I really only fight and I'm strong. Okay, so I need a four or more focus. Lower danger meter by one, and I get to draw clue 23. That's not going to do it. I lose. I raise the danger meter by two and try again. One, two. All right, let's try it again. Oh, fudgicles. Okay, I lose and raise the danger meter by two. One, two. Time to eat a sandwich. We're going to take a moment to chow down and uh, discard this, and I get to lower my danger meter by four. Because, you know, in this horrific moment, one, two, three, four. All right. I need a four or more. That's a five. Awesome. All right, well, we did it. It only took three tries. Uh, 73. There's a passageway carved into the stone wall here, but someone has piled up a bunch of rocks to block the entrance. Move all the rocks. Okay, but I have a way to help with strength, at least. So we can do this. Oh, I forgot to lower the danger meter by one when I did that dexterity thing. Awesome. So I can add plus two to my strength. So uh, basically I just can't roll one. And I did not. Awesome. So if I win, I lower the danger meter by one and draw clue 79. We're back to, you know, where I'm feeling better about that danger meter. 79. I really wish I had found a key card. Halfway down the passageway, you find a chimpanzee sitting at a desk. He's smoking cigarettes and watching TV. He looks angry. Fight the chimpanzee. All right. Well, where's my knife? Plus one. And I need to roll a two or higher. That'll do it. Lower the danger meter by one and draw a clue 75. challenges, but I'm not getting anything. I guess that's what I get for not searching other rooms earlier. Interesting. You run past the chimp and fight right into a ten-foot guinea pig. It is adorable, and it can kill you. Attack it, fighting, sneak past it, dexterity, heave a table at it, strength, or climb over it, climbing, or find another solution, perception. 
Uh, let's see here. If I win with Dex Required Challenge, Conquer the Guinea Pig. If I win, I lower the danger meter by 2 and draw clue 77. So no matter what, I get the same result. Uh, so I guess I can just choose based on what I have. So I'm definitely going to try to use Strength by heaving a table at it because I can add plus 2 to that. So as long as I don't break my wooden dowel, which I did not, so that's a 5. Awesome. So I win, I lower the danger meter by 2, which I can't do, and I draw clue 77. And I fought a guinea pig. Never thought I'd say that out loud. You're just burning through these clue cards. There's the key card. You see an access key card on the floor. You grab it and run through the doors in front of you. Unsure of what is on the other side. Keep this and go to story card 69. Which is somewhere in this pile. Oh no, it's not. It would be in this pile. There we go. You are now in a chamber with three prison cell doors. Your heavy iron things with small barred windows that make it difficult to see what might be inside. There's a ring of three keys hanging from a nail on the wall. If you try cell A, go to story card 77. If you try cell B, go to 73. And if you try cell C, go to 85. The answer is always C in a multiple choice, uh, isn't it? Maybe? Eh, whatever. Let's go to 85. I bet the person who made this game knows that. And they're gonna kill me. <laughs> Let's see here. Someone sleeping on the cot in cell C with a thin blanket pulled over their face. You can wake the person up so you can talk to him, attack him before he can attack you, or just tiptoe out of the cell. Uh, why would I attack him? Uh, all right, well, let's try talking to him. Clue 67. Maybe he'll attack me. You gently shake the person, prisoner, by the shoulder. He flings the blanket from his face. It's an exhausted-looking man who's obviously relieved that someone has finally come to rescue him. Thank you. I'm Professor Marsden, he says. Marsden, you ask? Are you related to Henry Marsden? Yes, this was the estate of my ancestor, General Marsden. But at the moment, we have more urgent things to discuss. Go to story card 90. Huh. We did it. Chapter 3, Goal Achieved. Professor Marsden looks worried. You have to help me. You have to help me stop my former research assistant, he says. She's twisted our scientific research for evil. So she's responsible for all these chimps, you ask? Yes, he says, but there's something bigger afoot. I'm talking about the alien science. Marsden says he can provide all the answers you're looking for, but you should first make sure you're prepared to leave this section of the house behind. He can give you explicit directions to important locations, if you think you might have missed anything. Yep. Well, I'm not in the habit of going back, so we're just going to say we completed Chapter 3. Um, so far, I'm liking this. Um, a lot of cool challenges in this one, lots of rolling. Um, yeah, interesting. Although I'm not sure what all these psychic premonitions mean, but hopefully we will find out more later. I wonder if this was the banana box I couldn't get. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, we're having a good time with this so far. We will be back uh, next week with Chapter 4. And then finally chapter 5, when it's finally over. Um, but if you are liking the videos so far, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Um, but if you're not liking the videos, I don't know why you're still watching. We're on chapter 3 now. Uh, but other than that, again, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.